Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I sincerely hope you're having a wonderful day. So as many of you know, server info is a great way to portray information to your players immediately as soon as they join your server before they can even wake up. I've actually done a full tutorial on this plugin already way back in the day, but it didn't go over any of the customization features that I know a lot of people are wondering how to do. So on today's video, I'm not going over the basics of server info. I'm gonna be going into how you can customize it to make it your own to fit your server better. Hey everyone, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy where I teach you guys the very best tips and tricks to owning and operating a successful Rust server. If this is your first visit to my channel, make sure you subscribe so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. And of course, if you take any value out of this video, do me a favor and hit that like button for me. And if you want to take it one step further, feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section down below. So one of my personal pet peeves is when I go into a brand new server that I've never been in before and I come in and I see this. When you join a server and you see this, you know that the server owner wanted to portray some information to you and maybe they didn't necessarily know how to do it or didn't get around to doing it or whatever. There's a multitude of different reasons why this can happen. This plugin is a very powerful way to get a lot of information across to your players or they can reference back to it later because you can always bring this menu up again if you accidentally close it and you want to get it back. So on today's video, I'm going to show you four different things that you need to know how to do in order to make this plugin personalized to your server. So the first thing is a lot of people don't like having this next page button right here. So I'm going to show you how to remove that so that you don't have any next pages. I'm also going to show you that you can have more than just the three tabs that you see here currently right now. By the way, this is just default. I haven't made any changes to this plugin. This configuration is exactly how it's going to be when you load this onto your server. So you get first tab, second tab, third tab, and by default, only the first tab has the next pages. The third thing that I'm going to show you how to do today is how to remove these four Rust graphics that you see currently on my screen right now. I'm also going to explain why they're there. And then lastly, I'm going to show you probably one of the most important features that you can actually utilize with this plugin is instead of having this color on the background and these four images right here, you can upload your own image with whatever graphics application you choose to use, whether that be Photoshop or GIMP or whatever you want. So I'm going to show you how you can take your server info from this, which is default, and turn it into either this, or if you want to get a little bit more fancy, you can turn it into something like this. All right, so first things first, let's navigate to our configuration file for server info. Oxide, config, roll down to server info. There we go. This is what a default server info configuration file looks like right here. And at first glance, I guess it could potentially be a little bit overwhelming. I mean, the configuration file alone is 181 lines long, so it can feel like there's a lot of information in there. But if you break it down section by section, there's actually not a whole lot of information that you need to deal with. So like I said, this is a completely default configuration file. So I'm going to be referencing some line numbers it will only work on a default configuration file as soon as you've started adding or removing lines obviously my numbers aren't going to line up with what you might be seeing so keep that in mind but just for demonstration purposes it allows me to direct your attention to a specific area so if we start at line 4 and we scroll down to line 59 that entire section so from line 4 to line 59 is just dealing with this first page right here so I've got this section highlighted right here and we're just going to go over a couple of different things so obviously Obviously the button text and the header text, this is all fairly self-explanatory stuff. And then our text lines are down below that. So if you go right down below the text lines, you're going to see these image settings right here, and you're going to see four different URLs. Those links are directing to those four images that you saw on my screen just a minute ago. So if you want to get rid of those four images, I know I'm not doing this in the order that I said I was going to in the intro. If I did, I wouldn't have these graphics to be showing you how to get rid of them and I'd have to put them back. So we're going to do this first. So if you want to get rid of those graphics, just go through and change all of these transparencies on all four of those graphics to zero. So that's line 26, line 36, line 46, and line 56. And if we save that and we reload server info and go back in game and type slash info in chat, it brings up our server info. But those four graphics that you saw a minute ago are now gone. So why are those graphics there to begin with? Well, most plugin developers, when they're allowing the end user to have any kind of customization, they'll put things into the configuration files as placeholders so that if you decided down the road that you wanted to utilize that location for something, you could. So for example, if I only wanted to use one of those graphic locations, let's say bottom right hand corner, and I wanted to use my server's icon in that location, I would just add that icon address into my configuration file, leave the transparency at 100% and leave the transparency for the other three at zero. Therefore, only one of those graphics would show up. In fact, while I'm at it, I might as well just go ahead and do it. So I just have this YouTube icon and it's hosted on my imager site. I'm just gonna grab the direct 
link address and head back over to my configuration file and let's go down to position four. I think this is position four right here. I'm gonna add that address in there. I'm gonna change my transparency back to 100. I'll save my configuration file. I'll reload the plugin. And now if we go in chat and if I do slash info, it should show YouTube icon that I just grabbed from my imager site. So you can see how the four different quadrants can be useful. And yes, you can change these sizes. As you can see, my logo is a little bit distorted right now, but you can fine tune that no problem. All right, so that's how you remove those four graphics from default. The next thing that I said that I would teach you how to do is how to get rid of this next page option right here, next and previous, obviously. And this is for servers that don't necessarily need to have multiple pages, or you know for a fact that your players aren't looking at those next pages anyways. You definitely don't wanna put your rules or something like that on page two or page three, because then somebody could just easily say, oh, sorry, I didn't see the rules because I didn't know how to click to the next page or whatever. So it's sometimes just easier just to get rid of those extra pages and just use the tabs. But for right now, let's just get rid of those extra pages. So just as it is with everything else, there's probably more than one way to do this. This is the easiest way for me to show you guys how to do this. I'm sure there's other ways. So don't take this as gospel. So a minute ago, you saw me section off this area right here, lines four to lines 59. So if we want to get rid of that first page that has the multiple page options on it, we're going to replace it with something else. So just as a reminder, this is what it looks like right now. I want you to pay attention to the first tab, second tab, third tab, and then obviously you can recognize what the rest of this page looks like. Just remember that because it's going to change and I want you to make a note of an important thing that we're doing here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab everything starting at line 91 on the outside of the curly brace and I'm going to scroll all the way down to line 113. So basically what I've done here is I've selected all of the information required to create a second tab. But what we're going to be doing is basically duplicating it. So we're going to replace all of the information from first tab with just the information from second tab. So we go back up and we're going to grab everything starting at line four, which is the beginning of the first tab. And we're going to scroll all the way down to line 90. So line 90, at line 90, you want to go also on the outside of the curly tab, but inside of the comma that's there. It's very important that you maintain syntax because computers are incredibly stupid. And if you don't keep your syntax correct, it's going to revert this file back to default again, and you're going to lose all of the work that you've done so far. So I copied all of the information from second tab. Now I'm just going to paste that in place of first tab. And now, as you can see, all of that first tab information is gone and is now replaced with second tab. So let's just save this. Let's reload the plugin. Let's go back in game and type slash info. That worked exactly like I expected it to. So basically now, as you can see, I have two second tabs and a third tab, which means I have no more image in the top right hand corner, which was only on the first tab. And I've now got a duplicate second tab and we still have a third tab right there. But as you can see, you no longer have a next button in the bottom right hand corner anymore because you didn't have a next button on the second tab to begin with. Simple, right? Clear as mud. So I know I described this section as getting rid of the next button, but essentially what we've done is duplicated the second tab as opposed to actually getting rid of something. I guess technically we got rid of it because we pasted over that information in the configuration file. So technically I'm not wrong. So the third thing that I want to show you guys is how you can make more tabs on the left hand side there. Instead of just having three, you can essentially have as many as you want, providing of course that they're going to fit in that location. And we're actually going to utilize the same technique that we just did. We're just going to be doing it for a different reason. So what I like to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom of the configuration file down to where it starts talking about the third tab. This is the tab that we're going to replicate and we're going to replicate it, let's say five times in this case. So now bear in mind that this is no longer a default configuration file. We've modified this. Therefore, this configuration file is very much shorter than what it's going to be for you if you're doing this right out of the box. So actually from this point forward, let's just forget about line numbers because it's just going to screw somebody up anyways. So let's go down to where it starts talking about third tab. We want to go up to this curly brace right here and we want to go after the curly brace before the comma. And then we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of that section right there. If you guys are familiar with C Sharp or most programming languages, you're going to understand what I'm doing here. I'm basically grabbing everything inside of curly braces and copying and pasting it. So we've got all of this information right here from third tab. I'm just going to do control C to copy that to my clipboard. And then I'm going to go at the end of this curly brace right here, the default, this was already default, this was already there. And I'm going to do control V 
for as many times as I want a new tab to appear. So I think I said we were going to do five. So let's do five. One, two, three, four, five. And if you're not comfortable with this yet, now would be a really good time to make a duplicate copy of everything that we've now just done and put it somewhere else. In case you've made a mistake, you can revert back to your backup and not lose all of your information. I'm like about 75% confident that I did that right. So I'm just going to carry on like I did this right. So scroll back up to the first iteration of the third tab, the one that we copied at the beginning of this, and then scroll down until you get to the second iteration. So the one that we have now pasted in, we want to start renaming these so that we know where they are. So I'm going to name that one fourth tab. I'm going to scroll down to the next one. I'm going to name this one fifth tab. Let's scroll down one more. This is going to be the sixth. This one's going to be the seventh. And I think this is the last one. Let's call this one the eighth tab. I think that's it. Yeah. Now that we've renamed all of those tabs to show up correctly in game, let's just save our configuration file. Let's reload the plugin again and let's go in game and let's see if we did this right slash info in chat. And there we go. It shows up exactly like I expected it to. So now we have all of this real estate that we can put as much information in there as we want. So that's essentially how you add more tabs. Before we carry on to what I think is the coolest part of this plugin, which is the graphics, I'm going to show you one other thing that I didn't say that I was going to show you. So did you know that you can actually make it so that you have to be a part of an oxide group before you can even see one of these tabs? I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. So this is at the very top of my configuration file. So as you can see here, I'm working on the first iteration of second tab. In fact, let's change that, change this to first tab. If you scroll down just a little bit while you're still working inside of that, you can see this section right here called oxide group. And by default, there's no information between those quotes. The reason for that is it just makes it by default so that everyone can access every tab that you have on your server info. Let's say that you wanted to have a section of your server info area that was only accessible or only visible to a select group of people. So let's say we had moderators, for example, and we had a different set of rules for moderators. Well, we can make it so that only people that are in the oxide group called moderators will have access to a certain section. So I'm just going to quickly add an oxide group called mods because this is my test server. I don't actually have these things set up on there. And for this first tab right here, I'm actually going to change this to mods only. And I'm going to change this header section right here to please follow mod rules. Okay. And then I've put a couple of rules in there and then I'm going to go down to where it says oxide group and there's nothing in between the quotations. So I'm going to put in here the name of the group exactly as I just created it. And then I'm going to save this configuration file. Obviously, I'm going to reload the plugin and let's go in game and see what we've done. So as you can see here, now it's starting at second tab, but a minute ago you watched me change it to first tab and then I changed that first tab into moderator rules. I'm not a member of this new mod group called mods. Therefore, I don't have access to that information. So let's just quickly change that. So mods, user groups, and click on me. And then I'm gonna add myself to this new group called mods right here. I can close out of this. I can do slash info again, and it's gonna be a little bit different now. You're gonna see a section called, I think we called it mod rules or something like that. Mods only, there we go. So now, as you can see, simply by being placed into that oxide group, I now have access to this information. Quite powerful stuff. You can see how this would be valuable. You can have mods, admins, owners. You can have all of these different pages that show up based on what group that player is in different VIP levels, different features that different VIPs get different commands that different VIP groups can have very powerful stuff. Don't dismiss this. This is huge. It's kind of one of those things that I don't think people actually utilize server info to its fullest potential. In fact, there's probably even things that I don't know about server info. that would make it even cooler. Speaking of cooler, let's dress this up to the final fourth step. So I'm all about customization. I like seeing things different from every server that I go on to no matter what I hate seeing repetition. And I also hate seeing zero effort being put into the details. And this is one of those things. This is a detail. So you see the big blue square that we're all staring at right now. That's default. That's boring. So let's change this up so that it actually represents me or my server or the information that I want to get across to my players. So if we go back to our configuration file, scroll all the way down to the bottom and then back up a little bit, you're going to see this right here. In my case, it's line 205, but that doesn't mean anything anymore because 
because we've now completely changed this configuration file. But let's say it's about 20 lines up from the bottom. As you can see here, there is a, a URL that can be changed to whatever you want it to be. So let's just head over to my imager and grab this image that I just created just for this tutorial. We're going to grab that direct link. We're going to take that back over to our configuration file and we're going to replace that address that's there by default and replace it with my imager link. After you've replaced your address location with the address that represents your actual graphic, let's scroll up just a little bit. Background image enabled is default set to false. Let's change that to true. Let's save this. Let's reload the plugin. Let's go back in game and see what we've done now. And there you go. Now we're getting somewhere. This is some customization that I can get on board with. So not only is it the same blue background that you're going to see on every other server that doesn't watch this video, but now we can actually put some information on here that you probably didn't even know that you could. So basically what you're seeing here is a graphic that I designed in GIMP for free on a 1920 by 1080. I uploaded that image to Imager. I took that address from Imager. I put it into my configuration file. Boom. Here we go. This is what you get. If you want to take this one step further, you can literally put whatever you want on this graphic. Let me just grab this one here, right here, direct link. Let's change this address here again to the new one. Save, reload the plugin again, go back in game, type slash info, and boom, there you go. Now we have an even more dressed up graphic than what we have before. Obviously, these colors don't really work out, but I just wanted to show you the possibilities. You can literally put whatever information you want. Be careful with your graphics. Be careful with the pictures that you use. You want to stick within community guidelines. Trust me, if somebody sees this and they don't necessarily agree with the images that you're using, they're going to smack you down. I'm just going to leave this up here for a minute because I think too many people are going to skip right past it and I want you guys to do something for me. But the information is right here on this image right now. So that's how I want you guys to customize server info for your servers. Make them your own. Make them representative of you and your community and everything that you've tried to build with your Rust server. Don't just leave it at default. It's so boring. It's so unpolished it's so it's so unfinished i absolutely hate it all right that's it for customizing server info i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did you know what to do you need to hit that thumbs up for me and you need to leave me comments in the comment section down below let me know what you guys think do you like it do you not like it i don't care just leave the comments remember at the end of the day we have to keep the youtube overlords happy and that's how you do it that's how you guys help me keep the overlords happy all right i put out a brand new video every friday at 5 p.m mountain standard time so until next friday i hope you guys are staying safe and taking care of each other Thanks for watching. I'll see you then.